everyone, today I'm going to read Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Part 1, Chapter 1. The Boy Who Lived Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of Number 4 Perfect Drive were so proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious. Because they just didn't hold with such nonsense. Mr. Jarsley was director of a firm called Grunnings, which made drills. He was a big, beefy, beefy man with hardly any neck, although he did have a very large moustache. Mrs. Dursley was thin and bald and had a neck twice the amount of a usual neck, which came in very useful as she spent so much of her time craning over the garden fences, spying on her neighbors. The Dursleys had a small son called Dudley, and in their opinion, there was no finer boy anywhere. The Dursleys had everything they wanted, but they also had a secret. And the, their greatest fear was that somebody would discover it. They didn't think they could bear it if anyone found out about the Potters. Mr. Potter was Mrs. Dursley's sister. But they hadn't met for several years. In fact, Mrs. Dursley pretended she didn't even have a sister. Because her sister and her good-for-nothing husband were all undursleys as it was possible to be. The Dursley shuddered to think what the neighbors would say if the Potters arrived in the street. The Dursleys knew what the Potters, that the Potters had a small son too, but they had never seen them. The boy was not a good reason for keeping the Potters away. They didn't want Dudley mixing with a child like that. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on a dull grey Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest that strange and mysterious things would soon be happening all over the country. Mr. Dursley hummed as he picked out his most boring tie for work and Mrs. Dursley gossiped away happily as she wrestled a screaming Dudley into his high chair. None of them noticed a large tiny owl fluttered past the window. At half past eight, Mr. Dursley picked up his briefcase pecked Mrs. Dursley on her cheek and tried to kiss Dudley goodbye but missed, because Dudley was now having a tantrum and throwing cereal at the walls. Little tank, choked Mrs. Dursley as he left the house. He got into his car and backed out of number four's drive. It was on the corner of the street that he noticed the first sign of something particular, a cat reading a map. For a second, Mr. Darcy didn't realize what he had seen. Then he jerked his head and looked around again. There was a tabby cat standing on the corner of Privet Drive, but there wasn't a map in sight. What could, have, what could he have been thinking of? It must have been a trick of light. Mr. Darcy blinked and stared at the cat. It stared back. As Mr. Dursley drove around the corner up the road, he watched the cat in the mirror. It was now reading the sign that said, Privet Drive. No, I'm looking at the sign, Privet Drive. Cats couldn't read maps or signs. Mr. Weasley gave himself a little shake and put the cat out of his mind. He drove towards the town. He thought of nothing except a large order of drills hoping to get this day. But on the edge of the town, the drills were driven out of his mind by something else. He sat in the usual morning traffic jam. He couldn't help noticing that there seemed to be a lot of strangely dressed people out about. People in cloaks. Mr. Dursley couldn't bear people dressed in funny clothes. The get-ups you saw on young people. People in cloaks. Mr. Dirt. Oh. He supposed this was some stupid new fashion. He drummed his fingers on the steering wheel as his eyes fell on the huddle of these weirdos standing close by. They were whispering excitedly together. Mr. Dursley was enraged to see that a couple of them weren't young at all. Why the man had to be older than he was? 
wearing an emerald green cloak. The nerve of him. But then it stuck Miss Darcy that this was probably some silly stunt. These people were obviously collecting something, collecting for something. Yes, that would be it. The traffic moved on a few minutes later. Mr. Dursley arrived in Grunning's car park, his mind back on drills. Mr. Dursley was all sat with his back to the window of his online floor. If he hadn't, he might have found it harder to concentrate on drills that morning. He, he didn't see the owls swooping past in broad daylight. Though the people down on the street did, they pointed and gazed open mouthed as owl after owl sweat sweat overhead. But most of them had never seen an owl even at night time. Mr. Jersey, however, had a perfectly n- normal owl free morning. He yelled at five different people. He made several different important he made several important telephone calls and shouted a bit more. He was in a very good mood until lunchtime, when he thought he'd stretch his legs and walk across the road to buy himself a bun from the baker's opposite. He'd forgotten all about the peoples in cloaks until he passed a group of them next to the baker. He eyed them angrily as he passed. He didn't know why, but they made him un- but he- they made him uneasy. This lot were whispering excitedly too. And he couldn't see a single collecting tin. It was only his way back he passed it, touching the large donut in his in a bag, he caught a few words they were saying. The potters, that's right, that's what I heard. Yes, their son Harry Mr Dursley stopped dead. Fear flooded in him. He looked back at the whisperers and if, as if he wanted to say something, but then thought better not to. He dashed back across the road, hurried up into his office, snapped at his secretary, not to disturb it, seized the telephone, and almost was starting his home number when he had changed his mind. He put the receiver back down and stroked his mustache. No, he was being stupid. Potter was such an un- such usual name. He was sure that lots of people called Potter who had a son called Harry. Come to think of it, if he wasn't even sure his nephew was called Har- Harry, he'd never even seen the boy. It might have been Harvey or Harold. And there was no point of worrying, Mrs. Dursley. She always got so upset at any mention of her sister. He didn't blame her if he had a sister like that. But all the same, those people in cloaks. He found it a lot harder to concentrate on drills that afternoon, and when he left the building at five o'clock, he was still so worried that he walked straight into some into someone just outside the door. Sorry, he grunted at a tiny old man and stumbled. Almost fell. It was a few seconds before Mr. Jones realized the man was wearing a violet cloak. Mr. Dursley realized the man was wearing a white cloak. He didn't seem at all upset at being almost knocked to the ground. On the contrary, his face put into a wide smile and suddenly his quick little voice had made passers by stare. Don't be sorry, my dear sir, for nothing could accept me today. Rejoice, for you know where it gone at last. Even mothers like yourself should be celebrating this happy, happy day. The old man had hugged Mr. Dursley around the middle and walked off. Mr. Dursley stood rooted on the spot. He had been hugged by a complete stranger. He also thought he had been called Muggle, whatever that was. He also he was rattled. He hurried to his car and set off home. He was hoping, he was imagining things, and he had never hoped that before because he had a proof of in- in- imagination. He pulled, as he pulled into the driveway of number four, the first thing he saw, and it didn't improve his mood, was a tabby cat. He spotted that morning. It was now sitting on the garden wall. He was sure it was the same one. It had the same markings around its eyes. Shoo! said Mr. Dursley loudly. 
The cat didn't move. It just gave him a stern look. Was this the normal cat behavior? Mr. Dursley wondered. Trying to pull himself together, he led him inside the house. He was still determined not to mention anything to his wife. Mrs. Dursley had a nice normal day. She told him over all about the next door's problems with his with her daughter and how Dudley and Lord and Rue were shocked. Mr. Dursley tried to act normally. When Dudley had been put to bed, he went into the living room in time to catch the last report on the evening news. And finally, bird watchers everywhere had reported that the nation's owl had been behaving very unusually today. Although owls normally hunt at night, they are hardly ever seen in daylight, and there have been hundreds of sightings of these birds flying in every direction since sunrise. Experts are unable to explain why owls have been suddenly changed their sleeping pattern. The news readers allowed themselves to grin. Most mysterious. And now, old Jim McGuffin with the weather. Going to be any more showers of owls tonight, Jim? Well, Ted, said the weatherman, I don't know about that. But it's not only the owls that have been acting oddly today. Viewers as far as apart as Kent, Yorkshire and Dundee have been falling in to tell me that instead of rain, I promised yesterday there had been a downpour of shooting stars. Perhaps people have been celebrating bonfire night early. It's not until next week, folks. But I can promise a wet night today. Mr. Dursley sat frozen in his armchair. Shooting stars all over Britain, owls flying by daylight, mysterious people in cloaks all over the place, and a whisper, a whisper about the potters. Mrs. Dursley came into the living room carrying two cups of tea. It was no good. He had to say something to her. Her, He cleared his throat nervously. Uh, Petunia, dear, you haven't... I heard something from your sister lately, have you? As he expected, Mrs. Dursley looked shocked and angry. After all, the young upset pretended she didn't have a sister. No, she said shortly. Why? Funny stuff on the news, Mr. Dursley mumbled. Owls, shooting stars. And there are lots of funny looking people in town today. So, said Mrs. Dursley. Well, I just thought maybe it was something to do with, you know, her a lot. Mrs. Darcy sipped her tea through her slits. Mrs. Darcy wondered whether he dared to tell he'd heard the name Potter. He decided he didn't dare. Instead, he said casually as he could, Her son, he'd be about Dudley's age now, wouldn't he? Now, that was part one of chapter one, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'll continue with part two a few days later. Thank you for watching. Bye!